One of the top programs not only in our area but in the entire country in high school football, of course, has been the Hoover Buccaneers. Coach Josh Niblett has been the head coach of that program since the 2008 season. And even though they haven't won a state championship in a couple of years, a drought by their standards, they feel like they've got the team in place to challenge for it once again this year. Scott Griffin had a chance to visit with the coach of the Bucks, Josh Niblett. Well, it's just my dad and my mom both. I mean, it was all about understanding what's the most important thing in life. And that's, you know, when I wake up every day, you know, God's blessed me tremendously. I mean, he's given me this job. He's given me this ministry. He's given me this opportunity. And it's my job to make an impact on people's lives. It's my job to wake up every day and give a better version of myself, be 1% better to glorify him. Um, but it's also about trying to live in a way to where you're not hoping for certain things you just have. When you have faith in what you do and you believe in what you do, you're committed to what you compete for every day. You know, I, it's my job to be, number one, the best person I can be, to be the best husband to my wife, to be the best father to my children, and then to be the best coach and leader I can be for this program. And so the only way I can do that is, is I've got to kind of make sure I open myself up every day and see what God's going to present me with. You know, what is his purpose? What is his plan for me? What is his plan for what we're doing here? And then how can I be a vessel? How can I be, you know, that servant for those that are around me? Because great leaders are not those that want to be served. They're those that serve. And so I try to seek to be able to do that every day. And I'm not perfect by no means. Uh, but I also understand that when I wake up every morning, my number one job is I'm going to make my bed and then I'm going to, I'm going to thank the Lord for everything he has blessed me with. And when I go to bed at night, I'm going to get what I deserve. And so when I lay my head down, I want to thank God for everything he's been able to do for me. Good, bad, and different the way I see it as a, in the flesh. You know, I've got to also understand how it works within the whole purpose and plan of what we do. Because we can all get frustrated. And look, there's a lot of people of faith right now that are frustrated and don't understand why. But instead of asking why, you know, we need to ask what and how can I do it. You know, what have I got to do to be better? Because right now we all have an opportunity to be an influence and be an impact for people's lives right now in these hard times. And the better we could do that, show these kids to be that example, the more they'll be that as they grow up. You know, like my son went back to school today, plays ball at Cumberland University. And so, you know, he went back to school today. And so he's been around me since March. You know, yeah. and, you know, that's one thing he said before he kissed me and gave me a hug before he left. was like, you know, it's been fun hanging out, you know. Yeah. And it, and, you know, as a coach, sometimes you don't get as much time with your kids. Now I'm coaching my son, who's who's a freshman for us. And so, you know, I've got a daughter that's fixing to head to Wallace to play softball. And so it really puts a lot of stuff in perspective, you know, the older they get. But then this is also my family here with these kids. And, you know, I try to be as much of a father for these guys. And I don't try to take the place of anybody. But I feel like every day I, I come up, it's like, I start every day by talking to our players because I think there has to be a mindset that we got to understand where we're at. You know, we're never just going to start today and move into a meeting. We're going to make sure we got a mindset of where we need to be and what kind of impact we can make, just like when we have our staff meetings. I mean, I start our staff meetings talking to our guys about what's important. Let's make sure we understand what's important. I challenge them to make sure they relay that message to their unit players. Uh, so collectively as a program, you know, we're supporting everything that we're doing. Like if we're, we're either, we either are the culture or we talk about the culture in which we want to be. And so if we're that, then we live it every day. That's not to mean you're not going to make mistakes, right? But at the same time, if we just talk about the culture, then we just got it up on the walls and we never live it out. And so it's been fun having my brother back. Um, you know, I really love our staff right now. I mean, I think we've got seven new coaches on our staff right now wow. from last year. Um, and I love the continuity we have within our staff right now. There's a great cohesiveness right now. We haven't been together very long. And so it's been awesome. Uh, it's been really good being around those guys, and I think they understand what we're trying to accomplish, not only on the field, but off. Well, I think the biggest thing is once, you know, we, we figured out where we were in the spring, you know, and then, you know, in March, and then from a school perspective, that was the most important thing, and then making sure the safety of our kids, our players, our staff, uh, and everybody, and then, then once we got the guidelines and, you know, we tried to have our Zoom meetings with our players and then we did some Zoom workouts and, you know, we tried to do as much as we could to try to keep those guys together so, so we could keep our unity and our brotherhood. Um, we also knew we weren't going to get to have spring ball. Um, and so, you know, once it came out that we could start in June with summer workouts, uh, then, you know, we had a plan together, ready to go. And so we want to make sure when our kids step foot on campus to, uh, to be ready for those workouts that there was no doubt knowing what we were doing, what we were trying to get accomplished, but also understanding the protocols and the guidelines of what we need to do from a, you know, uh, social distancing, wearing our mask, and we want to make sure every kid had a mask. We want to make sure they understood that. So we talked about that. We probably coached that more up the first two weeks than we did anything. Yeah. 
And then now it's just steadily just trying to remind them, you know, and steadily trying to be the example. And so uh, for us, it's trying to deal with it, but understand that it's here. You know, it's here, and it's, it's here right now. And so we got to deal with it. And, uh, but we got to make it a part of our life now, you know, about how we go about our business, whether it's washing our hands, making sure we keep personal hygiene like it's supposed to be, making sure we keep social distancing, um, because, you know, we're creatures of habit. And so, oh, yeah. you know, we like to walk up on somebody and talk with them, but then them understanding that, and, you know, and everybody getting used to wearing a mask all the time. But I think we've done a really good job of trying to handle it. Um, but at the same time, it takes all of us, not just one person saying, hey, this is what we got to do. We just got to all be in on it. You know, we got guys that had to work to take care of their families. You know, we had guys that might have had a little bit of more free time. We had guys that, you know, in virtual school, you know, their time schedule was a little bit different than maybe somebody else's. And so it was all about everybody adapting to do what they needed to do every day to make sure they're getting done what they need to get done. Number one, to be a better person. Number two, to be a better student. Number three, to be better for our families. And then number four, what can I do to be a better athlete? So when we do get back on the field, that's what I told them. It's not about when do we get back. It's about being prepared when we do get an opportunity to get back. And that's all on us as individuals. You know, it's one of those deals where, you know, I mean, it's, I wake up every day with a chip on my shoulder. So I wake up every day wanting to be a competitor. I wake up every day wanting to be a champion before I end the day. And so I think as, you know, whenever you lose, you know, I, I probably hate losing more than I love winning. And so, I mean, I take it personal, I take it hard because it's my job to make sure we're prepared to execute, play the game the way it's supposed to be played with class, with pride, uh, and with a sense of urgency and energy that nobody can match. And so, you know, that's one thing that we've talked about as a team and as a program, you know, we got to put ourselves in that opportunity again, and then we got to make the most of that opportunity. And, uh, and this group's hungry. I mean, this group's excited about, you know, where we're at, where we got an opportunity to be, and then and then working on finishing. But right now, it's all about us preparing against each other right now to get ready for the scrimmage on Saturday. And then next week, we'll start worrying about Dothan, and then we'll take it one game at a time and stay in the moment. Thank you, Scott, and thank you, Coach, for the time. Look forward to seeing the Bucks back in action this season.